Hi, it's Sandra from Sandra D. Imagery. Say hello to the little munchkin who will be starring sometime, somewhere in one of my creative images. To do this, I need to select him and use masking techniques to fine tune my selection so he will sit on a background looking right at home and neat. The tools I use when creating my art is a gaming mouse, which gives far better control and easier to use than a normal PC mouse. And I've been using a gaming mouse for a number of years. When I want to do the fine detail brushwork, I use the Wacom tablet, which allows me to get right into those corners and crevices. This is how I use a gray layer to make sure I have the edges tidy, no artifacts or edging. It's one of the hazards of composite imagery. Like any technique in Photoshop, there are many ways to get the same result. This is a personal preference, as I find I get better results using the grey layer instead of doing this kind of work in Select and Mask. I love selecting and cutting out different elements for my composite images, and sometimes I find it quite relaxing, though in the early days of my composite journey, it was a little bit fiddly. Let's get in and have some fun. There's many ways to select this little character and it depends on your image or your photo what selection technique that you use. It might be that you want to remove the background, select a subject or use the object selection. And I flick between those different selection tools depending on what I want to create. So what I'm going to do is unlock this layer and that means then it's a working layer. Over here on the left hand side you can see the contextual toolbar has come up, select subject or remove background. And so I might use these as a first go to and let Photoshop do the grunt work. I'm going to click on remove background and let's see what it does. I let Photoshop do its work. Now when I look at this I think it's not a bad selection but how do I know it's right on the edges? Just going to do undo and show another technique that you can use. Select subject. I'll click on that. Again, I let Photoshop do the work for me. Now what I need to do is put that selection into a mask. So I'm going to come down here and apply a mask and that selection will go into that mask. I'm going to undo that again and deselect using Control D. Sometimes I have to go up and use this technique and I'll come up here and I'll choose my object selection tool. I'll click on that. I'll come out and I'll just draw a square big enough to take in the little munchkin. I let go of the mouse and then I let Photoshop do the selections for me. But I can see now it's picked up some of the background which I don't want. So I'll deselect and I'm going to choose select subject. I let Photoshop do the work and I can see it's not perfect but that's okay. What I need to do is now put that selection into a mask. I'm going to come down to the bottom of the layer stack, click on the mask and now it's put that selection in a mask and I can see that now there. But has it done a good job of selection? I can zoom up, I can have a look. At this point, I'm thinking, I need to see if there's any edges or tidy up work that I need to do. And this is where I use a gray layer. To access a gray layer, I have an action that's on my actions panel and it speeds up my workflow. I'll put a link up in the description where you can watch another video, how I use a grey layer or how you can access a grey layer. So what I'm going to do is click on the action grey layer and there it comes into the layer stack. I like to put it underneath, it's just a habit I've got into. What I need to do now is click on the mask and I'm going to come up and really zoom in and start looking at what I want to do. I'm going to click on my brush tool 
And when I'm cutting out or masking, I will use a hard edge brush. So I'll come over to my brush panel and I have a composite brush collection that's available in the shop. And the one that I'll use for this is an edge masking and that has a hard edge on it. You can certainly go up to your brush settings, change your setting on your brush. But for me, this is the work that I do often. And so I want to speed up my workflow. So let's have a look and see what needs to be fixed. I'm going to hold down the space bar on the keyboard, which gives me the hand. And I can see there's some edging there that just needs to get rid of that. Particularly with AI imagery, you can get those little artifacts that just stay there. So with my hard edge brush, I'm just going to come in and get rid of that area there. I start to look down a little bit further and I can see that there's an edging there. Now, as I mentioned, there's many ways that you can do things in Photoshop. There's another technique that I would use to get rid of that white edging, but it's about using the gray layer to show me in the areas that I need to tidy up. Hold down my space bar and I'm going to have a little look around. Now I look at this here and I think I don't like that. It's a distractor for me. So I'm going to make my brush bigger using the bracket key and I'm just going to mask away. Now this is where the hard edge brush works. I'm going to make my brush smaller and I need to come in and get a really tight, what I call a tight edge or a hard edge. And I can come into that area and get rid of that. Now let's zoom up and have a look. It's a couple of little areas there. And this is why I use the gray layer. It shows that I've got different areas there that I just need to tidy up. For some people though go, you can do this and select and mask. That's fine, but I like working with the grey layer and there's a reason that you can work with this grey layer. It gives you a little bit more freedom. I'll hold down the space bar. I'm going to move around and let's have a look. Now I can see there's an area there. Now I can either come in and do this by hand or Another technique that might work for this area here is the object selection tool. I'm going to come over and get my object selection tool. And I'm just going to draw a square just for that little small area. Now what it's done is it's actually selected that area. It's gone a bit over. I could come up and change the minus, but I'm going to leave it because I have a hard edge brush this will work. I'll click on my brush tool and because I've selected an area, this is like colouring in between the lines and I just come in here and I'm going to go down that edge and I'm going to mask away that artefact that I didn't want. I'll deselect and let's have a look and now I can see there's a little bit of edging there, that's fine. I just go in and select that or mask that away. I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I come in and I get rid of that edging. And sometimes I quite enjoy doing this, particularly if you're used to creating composites. It's about the little details. So I'll come in and I'm not going to be too fussy with it, but you can see having that gray layer there allows me to pick up all those little white artifacts that are just pesky little distractors. Let's zoom down and let's have a look. And as I mentioned, I'm not going to be too fussed. But as I'm moving down the image, I can see there's an area here. This is where I'll come up, get my object selection tool. I'll draw a square and that will select that area. I get my brush, which is still on an edging brush with hard edges. I'll make the brush a little bit bigger using my bracket keys. And I just color in between the lines or mask away what I don't want. 
I'll deselect Control D. Now, if I zoom up, I can see it's a little bit raggedy. So I might just come in and get rid of that. There's another area there. Let's try the object selection tool. See if we can grab that selection. Bad. I can live with that, that's not too bad. I'll get the brush tool. I'll come in, mask away that, that I don't want, deselect. And you can't do that within select and mask. Coming back between the brush, getting the object selection tool. And I find having this gray layer helps me work consistently and I can pick up all the little edges that I don't want. Let's hold down the space bar, come down. I'm not going to be too fussy, but I can see this here. I don't like that. I'll make my brush a bit bigger. I get rid of that. That's where the hard edge brush works well. I can come in here, get rid of that. That's a little bit of a distractor. And I've got that hard edge brush that goes along there. Let's hold down the space bar. Definitely around the shoe, it's picked up a bit of the background. I'll get rid of that. I'll also come down here and get rid of that just there. Now I can also see an area that's got some of that blue texture just where that lamp is. So I'm going to get my object selection tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle and see what it selects. Now it's selected that area, fabulous. I'm going to get my brush tool, I'm going to zoom up and I'm just going to come in and just mask away that area. Let's do Control D to deselect. I'll zoom back out, let's have a look. And my little munchkin's not looking too bad. I'll zoom up again and I can see there's some areas there that I may not want in this. I may want to leave those little attachments there on the cuff. I'll hold down the space bar. Let's come in, I'll zoom up. And this is what you constantly do when you're working with the masking and selecting technique. Zoom up, back and forward. I know when I was first doing this, I just kept it at like 100% view or whatever and I just, I missed a lot of detail where I had done what I call bad masking. Now I'm going to turn that gray layer off. And the reason that I do that is sometimes turning that gray layer off, I can actually see other distractors. And I can see one just in there that I think I'd like to get rid of. So I'm going to turn my gray layer on, click on the mask, make my brush a little bit smaller, and I'm going to mask down there, and I'm not going to be too fussy with it, but it gives a separation. And I can see now as I come in here, there's a little bit of blue area. And I can continue with this. But I find using the gray layer combined with the mask, it now gives me an easier view instead of working with select and mask. I'll turn that gray layer off. And there's my little munchkin, all cut out, ready to be used in a composite. At this point, I would delete the gray layer and then I would save this as a PSD, as a personal preference, because what I can do is saving it as a PSD, I actually have the mask attached and that helps when you're placing that on a background that if you need to do a little bit more tidy up work on the mask, the mask is attached. As a bonus tip, I'm going to show you how I would now move the munchkin over to a background. So firstly, what I'll do is I'll delete that gray layer and I then grab this layer and I'm going to move it over a background which I've already opened into my workspace. So I'm going to click on the image, drag up to the top where the tab says background and then I'm just going to place the little munchkin where I want him. I need to size and position him where I want, so I'm going to 
do the shortcut key control T which is the transform tool just going to size him up to look a little bit more realistic and I'll just position him there I want to just make him a little bit bigger and I'll click on the tick up there now he's sitting where I want him but let's have a look at the layers stack it actually has the mask attached so that means that now I can come in and have a look see how he's sitting on the background and I can notice there's some areas that I've missed so I'm going to click on the mask make sure I have my brush tool and I'm still working on the hard edge selection brush and I'm going to zoom up and I can see there's some little edges that I've missed so all I do is just get my brush and mask those away and I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have the mask attached I'd have to use another technique when you first start learning selections and masking it can be overwhelming over the years I've tried different techniques and I found this is the one that works for my style. Of course, the munchkin needs a little bit more work to finesse the selection than edges, but this is the starting point. Thanks for watching and have fun being creative and let your imagination roam now and then.